I'm Kate Donahue, and I'm presenting joint work with John Kleinberg on fairness and utilization and allocating resources with uncertain demand. Um, so I'm going to start with a motivating example that really gets at the problem we're studying. So imagine that there's a stretch of beach, and on this stretch of beach, there are two towns, each make up, made up of a certain number of houses. This stretch of beach is prone to power outages that can occur unpredictably. So we don't know when they're going to happen, but we do know a probability distribution over when they will happen. And specifically in town A, 40% of the time, two houses are in need. And in town B, 70% of the time, three houses are in need. You can see this in the probability distributions here, where it looks like in town B, it's slightly higher chance that there'll be houses that have lost power. Um, luckily, the community has some resources to help deal with this problem. Specifically, they have two generators that can each help one house that has lost power. These have to be allocated between the two towns before a power outage occurs and can't be transferred afterwards. So there are three ways you can allocate these resources. You can put both of them in town B, one of them in each of the towns, or both of them in town A. And the community is wondering sort of how they should make this allocation. So if you're not interested in disaster relief, please stay with me. This is a motivating case for our paper, but it's definitely not the only case. You could think of a similar story around allocating blood donations across blood banks or teaching resources across schools. Anything where there's sort of a fixed amount of resource and probabilistic demands. I also want to emphasize we're not the first people to talk about this. Um, Hadi El Zain, who's talking right after me, wrote a fantastic paper last year on this exact problem. And they give a lot of the framework and examples, the definitions I'm going to go through. Their case was where you don't know the distributions in advance, and you're trying to learn them while doing fair, fair allocations through censored one-sided feedback. In our case, we build off of this by assuming we do know the distributions, and instead are trying to give theoretical bounds for performance. And I'll get into some details about this later. Um, so going back to the example, one objective we use in making an allocation is utilization, which is the expected number of resources that get used for a certain allocation. And I'll go through calculating utilization here for one of the possible allocations, where we have both of the generators in town B. So here, 30% of the time in town B, there are no houses in need, so zero generators get used. And 70% of the time, three houses are in need, so two of the generators get used. In this case, the utilization in town B is 1.4. And in town A, there aren't any generators, so this contributes nothing to the utilization. The overall utilization for this allocation is 1.4. We could do similar math for the other allocations, and see that this first allocation maximizes utilization, which is our goal. But this might seem sort of fundamentally problematic for you because everybody who gets help will be in town B, and everybody who doesn't get help will be in town A. Um, it might seem like this is an unfair allocation. This motivates a second possible objective, which is the probability gap. The way this works is that for each town, you calculate the probability of getting help, and, can, and then the gap is the difference in probability of getting help between the two towns. Um, again, we can work through an example. For town A, in this allocation, we have no generators, so the probability of getting help is zero. In town B, when there's need, there are three generators without, three houses without power, and two generator, generators, so each house has a two-thirds chance of getting assistance. The gap is two-thirds here. We can similarly calculate this for the other allocations. The probability gap is something that we would like to minimize. To have this gap, ideally, would be zero. Um, the smallest allocation, the smallest probability gap here is for the allocation with one generator in each town. So we have two objectives. They give, tell us two different things. How do we reconcile this? We assume the following procedure, where the community selects a maximum probability gap they're willing to accept, and then select an allocation that maximizes this utilization subject to this constraint. The utilization ratio is the ratio of utilizations obtained, where on top it's the maximum utilization, and below is the constrained maximum utilization. The smallest this is is when there's, it's one, and that's when the fairness constraint basically does nothing at all. And the larger this is, this indicates greater tension between the two examples. Um, so we'll go through an example. Um, suppose the community selects alpha is equal to 0.7. There are two allocations that satisfy this fairness constraint. Um, and of these, the first one has higher utilization, so it's selected. And the utilization ratio is 1. Let's suppose instead the community selects alpha is equal to 0.2. Then there's only one possible allocation that satisfies this. It has a, so we select it. And the utilization ratio is about 1.3. It's slightly higher than 1, indicating there's a slight tension between our two objectives here. So let's take a step back. We have this utilization and probability gap. These are functions of the probability distributions of need we had at the start. Our goal is not to tell people what utilization, what allocation they should select, but instead it's to look at how spaces of probability distributions impact the space of choices available to us. Um, the core results we have in the paper are as follows. We find that in the worst case, 
our two objectives can be arbitrarily opposed. But we then we find that for many commonly seen distributions, allocations that optimize for one objective also tend to do very well in the other. I'll go into some details here presenting our main theorems. For each case, I'll look at the main, the distribution of need we're looking at, and then explain the results we get. So in the first case, we look over any probability distribution of need where we have a discrete allocation of resources, things like one generator, two generators, three generators. And here we find that the utilization ratio can be unbounded. You could have arbitrarily high trade-offs between these two objectives for some certain distributions. So the next thing we thought about is, what if we decide to relax this and allow fractional allocations or probabilistic ones, like 1.3 generators in one town, for example? We find that this helps for uh, a constraints on fairness that's greater than zero, you find the utilization ratio is upper bounded by one over alpha. However, we find that if you require perfect fairness or perfect equality in obtaining the resource, then the utilization ratio can still be unbounded. These two results seem sort of negative and somewhat depressing, honestly. But the nice sort of saving grace is that the examples, if you look in the paper, are sort of very weird probability distributions you wouldn't ever see in real life. So the next thing we looked at was, what if we look at real life distributions, do we get better results? And the answer turns out to be yes. We find a specific family of distributions um, where these two goals are perfectly aligned. If you're solving for maximum utilization or you're solving for probability gap of zero, so perfect fairness, you can achieve both of these simultaneously. Um, this is really fantastic. And what we thought was really interesting is that you get this for the exponential distribution, which is sort of makes sense. It's a very nice distribution, but also a Weeple distribution, which is a little weirder. It's got fat, it's a fat tail distribution. This is pretty interesting to us. And we decided to look at a more realistic distribution, power law distributions, to see what results we get there. And here we find that the goals are sort of are closely aligned. It's not that there's an arbitrarily high trade-off between our two goals, and it's not that they're perfectly aligned, but if you have a fixed number of groups, the utilization ratio is bounded by some constant that's independent of the parameters you're looking at. Um, so together, these sort of sketch out the space of results you can have for different probability distributions um, and different results you can get. Um, if you're interested in learning more, please read the paper or else come talk to me.